This video will give you the instructions for doing design project one. In this worksheet called rubric, we give you general information needed for the project. You work on the project alone as if it were a midterm or final exam and no collaboration between students is allowed. All rules of academic integrity apply to this project. And unlike the homework, you must use this exact Excel template we supply for your project with all data put into this one Excel spreadsheet. You may use a Google Numbers instead of Excel for your spreadsheet, but you'd better make sure that none of the information in this spreadsheet is lost in translation. Your data is not only entered in precise locations in the spreadsheet, but it is also entered into a test in Blackboard, and that process is identical to homework and midterm exams of entering data into a Blackboard test. Where applicable, the worksheets indicate relevant figures and tables to use in calculations. Best to use them because all the numbers are there and the answer key I use is clued to the relevant figures and tables put in the spreadsheet. And on the worksheet labeled CH12 shaft underscore CH14 bearings, you must include a free body diagram of your shaft diagram. And you should also include the shear and moment diagram that will give you the shear and moment at various places along the shaft. You're going to need all this data anyway to enter into the spreadsheets. You will select a roller bearings from table 14-3 with any supplemental information you need supplied from the SKF website. You've already used a little information from their site in order to do your chapter 14 homework. Rings are selected from the sdp-si.com website and we provide convenient screenshots for all the ring data in the worksheet labeled CH11 keys and rings. This is the point scoring breakdown. The majority of the points 65 are in the worksheet labeled CH12 shaft and CH14 bearings and other points are given for the other worksheets. All adds up to 100. This problem is loosely modeled off of problems 9, 10, 11, and 29 in chapter 12, but there's a lot of additional information work you need to do so though I say loosely modeled, please use all of the raw data input that's here in the spreadsheet, not consult any of the problems that are in the textbook. In this problem, you have a shaft which has two pinions, one gear, and one V-belt shiv rotating on it. And you have a certain amount of power in, and that power is distributed per this diagram to the various components. And in order to simplify the task of finding directions of forces, we label them all for you. We give you the tangential force and direction and radial force and direction acting on the components that are on the shaft. Recall from chapter 12 that if you don't get the directions as well as the magnitudes right, you will get wrong numbers for moments and forces. So in order to take that variable out, I give you the directions. We also give you in the shaft diagram exact locations of specified diameters of the shaft. D1 is where my mouse is pointing now. Here's D2, there's D3, there's D4, 5 is over here, 4 is still in this part of the shaft, and 6 is out here on the end. And one of the things you'll need to do in this worksheet is come up with minimum shaft diameters for those six diameters as well as increase the diameters to specified amounts based on what we learned in chapters 12 and 14 about having to place bearings on them with known bearing bore diameters as well as increase the shaft diameters where necessary to have the proper shoulder dimension or increase the shaft diameters where necessary in order to be able to buy a commercially available ring. We also have this little hint up here that gives you the general magnitudes of some of the diameters and that's done because you have to have D4 be the largest diameter on the shaft. It is visually if you scaled it with a ruler but it needs to be or else you'd never be able to assemble all the components. And here in the gray border are all the critical inputs for the components on the shaft as well as the speeds and the horsepowers. 
gives you how many teeth on the gears and diametral pitches. And with all this information, you will be able to calculate the forces and moments on the shaft, which is the critical information you need to be able to calculate the minimum shaft diameters. In this part of our spreadsheet, we guide you through step by step, figuring out what component diameters are and how much torque is applied at various locations as well as speeds. Moving on down here, we take you through step by step all of the calculations that you need to do in sequential order. Then at that point, you'll need to calculate the upward X and Y forces and outward forces on the bearings in order to specify the proper bearing part number. And you have to calculate all of the moments combined with the torques and the forces on the shaft will allow you to figure out what minimum shaft diameters are. In this part of the spreadsheet, we give you a template in order to enter all the data for the bearings that you choose at locations A and E. Then we move along and create a template that resembles your homework from chapter 12 where we have a box of information that you enter data in order to calculate one by one each of the six minimum shaft diameters. And we give you some reminders of how to select bearings and shaft shoulder diameters per the instructions given in the videos and slides for chapters 12 and 14. We fill in the table with some constants and we allow you to look up others in appendices and then to help guide you through, we even give you a couple of critical equations that you're going to be using to calculate the minimum shaft diameters. This one here is for diameter D1. The others for diameters D2 uh, up through 6 look similar to this one. D2 is underneath the V-belt a shiv B. And so the moment and the torque in that location do affect what the minimum shaft diameter is when we even tell you that you're using ring grooves at a certain location. Moving through, we have diameter D3 has its work boxes here. We have diameter D4 is underneath gear D. Again, looks very similar. Diameter D5 is located underneath bearing E, and diameter 6 is located underneath gear F. So very similar formats. Here in this part of the worksheet, you fill in what you calculated for minimum shaft diameters. You're going to need that information at your fingertips in order to enter a data into the test. And here you type in what you decide to increase the diameters to based on decisions such as increasing a bore size for a bearing or increasing a shaft diameter to act as a shoulder or increasing a shaft diameter to be able to buy a commercial ring that we give you in the worksheet labeled CH11 keys and rings. And this part down here is actually a copy of all of the data points that you're going to be asked to enter into the Blackboard test. And each of these numbers here is the number of points given for each answer. What you can see is that we have a lot of questions and no one question has too much point value. There's a total of 40 questions total. So we average only two and a half points per question, which says if you get one wrong, it's not the end of the world. But the key thing you're going to find when you go through the flow of this worksheet is you're going to need to establish shaft diameters and moments and torques and get all that information right. Or the later worksheets, you're going to be starting with incorrect input. And that's going to be a big problem for you because you'll find it difficult to get correct answers on the later questions if you don't get correct answers on the earlier questions. And it's for that reason that we give you five tries to do the data entry and check your numbers, which is exactly what we do for homework. My advice would be to spend a couple of your first tries just doing this one data entry on this worksheet, CH12 shaft, CH14 bearings, and make sure you get a good score out of the 65 points on this first before you move on to the other worksheets. In the worksheet labeled 
CH9 spur gears, we create a template that looks almost exactly like what we had in your chapter nine homework on spur gears. We give you all the inputs up here that you need to solve the problems. You have to do some of your basic kinematic calculations at the beginning. And the basic flow of this section follows the need to propose a Brunel hardness for a pinion and gear. Now in this case, this set of data is for pinion C and spur gear P, that's up here. And because we have two pinions on this shaft, one gear, and on the mating shafts, you would have to have two gears worth and one pinion. We give you three sets of information to enter all of your calculations and your suggested Brunel hardness data. This one I'm showing here is for pinion R and spur gear D. And this one here is for pinion F and a spur gear Q. And the calculation methodology is all the same. And you may find some of the numbers are the same, but for the most part, when you go through the results, you're gonna have different numbers. And that will lead to a possibly different solutions for the three sets of pinion gears of what you would propose for Brunel Harden. And here shows the questions we ask on the test in Blackboard and how many points are assigned, 15 total for this worksheet. In CH11 keys and rings worksheet, we start by giving you some instructions for how to select a ring, and then we give you which rings to pick from. We go all the way from rings that are sized around a shaft diameter of three inches, that's dimension G, down to rings that are sized for 0.875, which says as a hint of all the numbers D1 through D6 that you're going to pick for the actual shaft diameters, possibly made larger than the minimums, the only numbers you should be picking are somewhere between 0.875 and three. If you get numbers for shaft diameters like four and five and six, that's just not the right answer to the problem because I'm not giving you a ring that you could use. So that's your clue that you've got an error in the diameters if your numbers get that big. And in addition to the shaft diameter, we give you the groove diameter that you would machine the shaft if you select the purchased ring and the groove width that you machine and the thickness of the ring that you would use. And here is the basic geometry of the ring. There's your width of the groove. There's your diameter D of the shaft, which is a little larger than G, the diameter of the groove. Now there's four places on the shaft where you use rings per instructions, D2, 3, 4, and 6. And we give you a little table here where you could enter what was the original minimum shaft diameter. What did you specify? In other words, what's the larger number that you've chosen? Or you may choose to leave it at the minimum shaft diameter, but just remember, you can only buy the rings that are up here and they're nice round numbers like one inch and one and an eighth. And this number here is one and three sixteenths, one and a quarter. So you got to be pretty lucky to have your minimum shaft diameter magically equal one of those numbers. It's not likely. Then your groove diameter is straight off the chart and your groove width is straight off the chart. The part number selected is just to keep you straight in your own mind which one you picked and the thickness is chosen per the chart. Here, we give you some practice as specifying the minimum required key length for different rectangular keys. In this little work block, it's for a rectangular key for split taper bushing for shiv B. And we leave these two numbers blank. What is the shaft diameter D2 and what is the torque on the shiv T sub B? because that's what you gotta be calculating on the prior worksheets. Now keep in mind here, when we say shaft diameter two, that's not the minimum shaft diameter. That is the larger number that you've chosen to use for the shaft at that location. In other words, you never select a key for a minimum shaft diameter. You select a key for what is the exact shaft diameter you've chosen in your design. It could be the minimum or it could be larger. The other constants in this gray area are 
specified in our project. So you just go with them and you'll note that this flow of calculations is per your chapter 11 homework. And we have you do it three times. Here's the second shot to attach pinion C to the shaft. Here's your third calculation to attach gear D to the shaft. They're all very similar calculations, but just make sure you put in the right shaft diameter and torque. And then down here at the bottom, those are the data points that we ask you to enter into the test and blackboard. In the worksheet labeled CH13 tolerances and fits, we give you some practice with that skill set that you learned in chapter 13. And the first thing we do is ask you to use our table 15-5, both for bearing A and for bearing E, and pick numbers off this table that say what shaft diameter would you use based on these bearings. A clue is that I'm only giving you certain bearings to pick from for bearing A, and I'm only giving you certain bearings to pick from for bearing E. So if you pick a bearing that's not on this table, it can't possibly be the right answer. Make sure whichever bearing you select is on this table. And if it's not, go back and take a look at your calculations for what's the right bearing to pick. Here, I give you a little bit of practice picking a clearance fit for the rectangular key to attach split taper bushing for shiv B. And that's per use of table 15-7. And in this location, you get some practice on specifying tolerances for clearance fits for shaft diameters using a table 13-3. Note that you have to fill in what is the nominal bore diameter, in this case, what's D2, in this second case, what's D3. And that, again, is not the minimum shaft diameter per se, it's what you select to use for the shaft diameter. The rest of these numbers on the input table, you figure them out just by picking numbers, in this case, off class RC5 table. And you were taught how to do that for chapter 13. Here at the bottom, you've got the exact test questions that you'll be asked to enter answers for in Blackboard. Good luck on this project. And if you have any questions, let me know.